Kalapati's body and the bodies of other dead sailors were cremated by stacking dry logs. As the fire started to burn, Sinadipati Bhutavikramakesari noticed that tears were streaming down the prince's face. Sir! Are you shedding tears for the death of these evildoers? God has given due punishment to the traitors who came to imprison them. Why should you repent? Said. He said, Sinadipati. These are not traitors, I am not sorry for their death either. I am sorry that such an evil time has come to the Chola country. The bad times have come with the scoundrels. Now there is nothing new. It has just arrived. What could be more harmful to the kingdom than if the sailors disobeyed Kalapati's order? Sinadipati. This is a small sign. I fear that the Chola kingdom will be split everywhere like this. If that happens, this Maharajya founded by Vijayalaya Chola will crumble to pieces. This harm is why should it take time because of me? I have heard the story of Mahabharata. Bharat says that foxes and wolves howled terribly when Duryodhana was born. Foxes and dogs must have howled terribly when I was born too. Said the prince. Sir. When you were born into this world, whatever auspicious omens befell you. The astrologers who predicted your horoscope. Enough, commander. Enough. My ears are sore from hearing this speech. Let my horoscope be special. The time has come for us to part. Commander. I ask you. If any sailors who have disobeyed the orders of the commander come to you from these ships, do not take them in. Immediately imprison them and send them to Tanjore. To be sent. Prince. We have only heard what Kalapati said. We have not heard what the sailors' party is. How can we decide by listening to one side's speech? Is it conducive to justice and righteousness? Come with me. When the sailors come, listen to them and decide. Sir. That is impossible. Do as they please. I cannot tarry here a moment longer. Must depart at once. Where is the ferryman? He asked. Whither to depart, prince? Why the boatman? Do you want to ask about this? I must also go to the ship carrying Vandaya the van. That brave warrior is not for me, he is in terrible danger on board a ship owned by an Arab. Can I leave him? Should I commit another betrayal of friendship if my sins are not enough? Sir. I have never known you to have committed any sin. Even if you say so, the world will not accept it. Vandiyadeva is a mere rascal. He has no forethought. How can you be responsible for the danger you have put yourself in? What is treachery in this? Prince. To celebrate a youth who came from nowhere as your friend is to me. I don't like it. Can't equals be friends. Sinadipati. I don't want to waste time in vain talk. Even if he is not my friend, isn't there something to be thankful for? All the elders from Valovar have said it. I will not let the reputation of the Chola clan never forget gratitude be spoiled. I will leave this very second and find that ship. How will you set out, and where will you seek, Prince? I will take the boat you came in and leave. Can you keep a rabbit and hunt a tiger? Can you chase a woodpecker in the deep sea in this small boat? What will you do after you catch it? I will get into the boat, and if the boat breaks, I will hold onto the log and swim away. Even if the ship carrying Van the van goes beyond the seven seas, I will chase it and catch it. If I cannot save my friend after capture, I will at least lose my life with him. Where is the boatman? Saying this, the prince looked around. He noticed Punghuli standing to one side and talking to the boatman. A mute old woman also stood nearby. He rushed towards where they were. When I visited recently, I found that Pungazali Kanal near Dathumpa was talking angrily with Apadakya Karan. Aha! What is this? Another riot! Said the prince. The boatman suddenly fell at the prince's feet. Prince! I have done harm without knowing it. I have done it out of desire for money, I must forgive you. He shouted. What's this? Flowerpot. 
They all seem to be driving me crazy. Can't you at least tell me what's the matter? Prince. I have been too shy to tell you for so long. This is my Tamayan who brought the two sinners who came to kill themselves on a boat from Kotakare. He has been waiting here until now on their word. This morning we put them on a boat again and took them to the ship we saw. Their friend is also on board. She said. Lord. Cut me to death. I did not know they were such scoundrels. If I had known I would not have done it. Kill me with their own hands. Said the boatman. Father. Your life is priceless to me now. Come on, let's go. Take me on that ship too. That is the reparation for the harm you have done to me. Come on, let's go. Said the prince. When he reached the beach, he rowed the boat lying on the shore and pulled it into the water. The prince was staring at the sea. The ship is still visible. Let's catch it. Said. The commander also looked closely at the distant ship. Prince. It's like the fruit slipped into the milk. Said. What? Good word even from yourselves. What we see is not the ship carrying Vandiyadeva as they think. It is Parthibendra's ship. It is coming from the side of Trigana Hill. It is coming towards our direction. Don't you see? Yes, yes. It is very well then. Parthipendra is coming with some other purpose. Yet he is coming at a good time. You can hunt the leopard with the lion. But I will not wait till the ship is here. I will go a little farther in the boat and meet. Prince. To come in the boat with them. Sir, none of you need come with me. I will consider myself a great help if you stay here. Thirumalai. I will tell you too. Are you hesitant if the sea is for you? Yes, sir. I was going to stay back too. My orders are to take care of them while they are on the island of Ceylon. The Prime Minister is at Madurai. I must go and tell him what has happened here. Do so. Pungazali. You must stand here too. Don't worry about your Tamayan. I'll take care of it. Didn't you say you left the boat you came in somewhere? Get in it and be on your way. I'll never forget the help you've done me. Sige. Wipe away your tears. What are the onlookers? Will they think? Having said this, the prince approached the mute queen and touched her feet and bowed. The old woman stopped him and blessed him with a sniff. The next moment the prince jumped into the boat that was ready in the sea. People on the shore stood watching the boat. The prince was also watching them from the departing boat. While looking at everyone in general, his eyes remained fixed on the tear-streaked face of Pungujali. Miracle! Miracle! Shouldn't the figures get smaller as they get further away? The figures of the others on the shore became smaller. But Punghwali's face was getting bigger and bigger. It was getting closer and closer to the prince. The prince shivered. He turned his eyes away. A dream that he saw on the first night came to his mind. The younger brat crouched down, brother. Don't forget Vanati is waiting for you here. His words were clearly heard amid the noise of the ocean waves.